Here we are again for another advanced tip video. This time we're going to take a look at a couple games that take advantage of the target functionality in WarioWare DIY, with some pretty neat results. The target travel type is really useful in its basic role, but it's especially powerful and flexible when combined with other AI actions. I'm always amazed at the advanced AI you can get in DIY from combining smaller, simpler AI pieces, and we're going to look at some cool effects we can achieve by combining targeting with other object actions and travel types. I want to start by showing you one of Jimmy T's games called Kickin' It. You tap the foot to kick the ball and keep it from going off screen. This game features a few different target related mechanics that I want to point out, but we'll get two obvious ones out of the way first. Take another look and notice what the foot does when I tap it. It targets the ball. It's a simple, effective use of targeting. The next thing to notice here is how the knee on the kicking leg moves. Well, what's going on here is that the knee is actually targeting the shin, and although visually abstract, it still gives it a very organic look. The last thing I want to point out is an interesting combination of targeting and roaming that's used to make the ball move in a random, realistic way. Take a look at the game now with the switch guide on, and notice the object here moving rapidly back and forth on the top of the screen. This is an object called Flag, and we can see that it's just a blank object. And if we pop into the AI dictating the movement of the ball, we can see in AI slot 4 that when the ball touches the foot, its action is comprised of a target and a roam, a bounce type roam to be specific. So what happens here is that the target function sets the direction of the ball towards the rapidly moving flag object at the top of the screen, and then the roam function takes over to make it arc up and then down. This explains why the soccer ball seems to move in a unique path every time it's kicked, because it starts its path by targeting the constantly moving flag object before it settles into its roam. It's a pretty neat effect from just combining two simple AI actions. We've seen now that the target function can help provide some very natural looking movement. In this soccer game, the foot, the leg, the ball, they all move in cool dynamic ways. That's something that can give your games a lot of flavor. Now let me quickly show you another simple application of targeting based on what we've learned already. I've done up a little tech demo with a car of a couple that's just been married. And I've created three can objects that I want to trail behind the car as if they were all attached to a string, you know, in the tradition of just married couples. Well, I can use targeting to achieve my desired effect. So starting first with the AI of the big can, what we'll do is we'll make it travel, and we'll set it to roam and wiggle within an area like so. And we'll set the speed to normal. Now pay attention to the speed that I've set here. Now moving on, we'll go to our next can, to which again we'll travel. And this time, we'll have it target the first can. And what we can achieve here is, by targeting it at a relative position, we can get a very organic movement out of the second can without making it move. It just targets the first. And we'll set it to a slow speed which makes it look like it's following the first can. Now for the third can, what we'll do, again, is we'll have it target the second can. And once again, rather than targeting the object itself, it'll target a relative position along that imaginary string that's behind the car at the slowest speed possible. So by setting that, let's take a look at what we get when we see the game in action. So you can see the effect we're achieving here by chaining multiple objects together and targeting them at progressively lower speeds. I'm sure with a little imagination, you can picture using this technique for perhaps a kite streamer or maybe a fiery dragon tail. So you've seen some interesting uses of the target function. And just to reiterate the point I made at the beginning of the video, the seemingly simple AI commands in DIY can be put together in creative ways for some impressive results. I hope you come up with some creative stuff on your own. 
See you next time.